Hello everyone and welcome back to Psyched. Today we're going to talk about the human senses. Now most everybody has heard about our five senses. Vision, hearing, taste, touch and smell. But in reality they are way more than just those five senses. So let's have a look at what they are. But first let's quickly define what our base five senses are. First there is vision. When light enters the eyes through the pupil it reaches the retina. And in the retina there are so called photoreceptors which pick up the light and translate them into a neural signal. And this signal travels via the optic nerve and the thalamus to the visual cortex where it's processed further. Also we have a sense of touch. Again there are special receptors that pick up touch called mechanoreceptors and they can be found throughout the skin and other parts of the body. When a mechanoreceptor gets activated it sends a neural signal via the nerves through the thalamus and it eventually ends up in the somatosensory cortex. Then there are taste and smell and they both pick up chemical substances and these happen through so called chemoreceptors. Now in the case of taste, the taste buds in our tongue and other parts of the mouth pick up these chemicals from a substance and send a signal to the gustatory cortex. In the case of smell, the chemoreceptors pick up chemical substances from the air and a signal is sent through the olfactory bulb and olfactory cortex. Now interestingly smell is the only sense out of the core of five senses where the neural signals don't travel through the thalamus. And it has been suggested that this more direct pathway from the nose to the cortical areas explains why so many animals rely so strongly on smell. Anyway finally there is hearing. And our hearing works by picking up small differences in pressure. These pressure changes or sound waves are amplified in our middle ear and then they reach the cochlea which has little hair cells that respond to different frequencies. As soon as the hair cells are activated electrical impulses are sent again via the thalamus to the auditory cortex. So these are the five base senses but in actuality we have much more. The exact number is not quite known but most research estimated between 20 and 30. We don't want to go through all of them but let's just mention a few. And let's start with two obvious ones hunger and thirst. Sometimes hunger and thirst are combined and referred to as interoception which refers to a sense about what's going on in our body. However physiologically hunger and thirst are not the same and should be seen as different senses. Hunger arises by an increase in the concentration of the hormone ghrelin. Also there are stretch receptors in the stomach and intestines that give feedback about how inflated these organs are. And thirst involves a variety of receptors that keep track of blood pressure, blood volume and water content in cells. There are even two kinds of thirst. One is where you get thirsty because you for example ate something salty. This is called osmotic thirst and is a consequence of a low amount of fluid in the cells. Second there is hypovolemic thirst which occurs when blood levels are reduced for example due to sweating. So thirst is actually more than a single sense. The signals that are created by receptors that are important for hunger and thirst are processed mainly by the hypothalamus. Another sense that is not immediately obvious is thermoception which refers to our ability to detect temperature. Some might think that this sense is more or less the same as touch as we typically get this information through our skin. However touch and thermoception are quite different and involve completely different receptors and thermoception relies on thermoreceptors. These receptors work by relating temperature of the air around us or an object to our own skin temperature which is typically around 32 degrees celsius. So an object that is colder than that will feel cold and an object that is warmer than that will feel warm. Now although thermoception and touch are quite different both signals arrive in the somatosensory cortex of the brain. Now the somatosensory cortex is often seen as the area for touch but in reality this region processes multiple senses. Another sense that often goes through the skin is the sense of pain. And again you might think this is just an extreme form of touch but pain is also processed by different receptors and these are called nociceptors. And this is quite clearly demonstrated by patients that suffer from congenital insensitivity to pain with anhydrosis which is abbreviated as CPA. 
due to a genetic condition, CPAP patients do not feel pain, or only very limited. However, their sense of touch is still completely intact. Oh, and you might think that not feeling pain is nice, but CEPA patients often end up with broken bones, bruises and open wounds because they do not receive any bodily feedback when something goes wrong. So pain is not nice, but it is important. Now the signals that are picked up by nociceptors also go to the brain, but it is hard to locate where exactly they go. And our understanding of that is far from complete. This is also the reason why it's hard to treat pain-related disorders. For now, we know that various regions are involved, including the prefrontal cortex, motor cortex, somatosensory cortex, the medulla and the periaqueductal gray. Now let's take a short look at a few more senses. Two of them are proprioception and balance, which help us to not fall over all the time. They give the brain feedback about our body position. Proprioception does this through feedback from the muscles and the sense of balance does it through the vestibular organ in our ear, which sends signals to the cerebellum. Then there is our sense of time, which helps us to know how much time has passed. Also, we have a sense of physical pressure and related to that a sense of personal space. So in summary, although it is commonly believed that the human body only has five senses, we actually possess significantly more and all of them contribute to our experience of the world and help us to navigate through the environment. All of them, whether they feel good or bad, are important for our survival. Now, that's it. We hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, consider leaving a like. Also, if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel and don't forget to ring the notification bell. Now, we hope to see you the next time.